Let's revise experiments for radioactivity. By the way, if you're wondering why the sound of this video is not so good, I've done so many videos recently that my microphone has stopped working. But I thought I'd get this video out in time. Okay, so let's start by finding the couch rate. Over here we have the radioactive source that has some radiation, and that radiation is being picked up by a Geiger Muller tube, which is then connected to a Geiger counter, which shows us the number of counts. All experiments in radioactivity, the first thing that we need to do is to measure the background count rate without the source. To improve our precision, we're going to measure this three times and then take an average. In radioactivity, we can always calculate the number of particles per second by measuring a count rate and dividing that by the time interval. For instance, if we've had 37 particles in, let's say, 10 seconds, then our background rate would be 3.7. Now that we have the background rate, what we're going to do is repeat the above, but this time with the radioactive source placed in proximity or right in front of the GM tube. As always, we're going to take three measurements and then take an average. After we've done this, what we need to do is to subtract our background readings. When we're doing this experiment, we're also going to be very careful when we're dealing with radioactive sources. So we're going to wear gloves when handling them. And additionally, we're going to make sure that we're not standing directly in front of them. Now, using this setup, we can also investigate the penetration power of different types of radiation. For instance, alpha particles are absorbed by only a few centimeters of air or a sheet of paper. Beta particles are absorbed by approximately three centimeters of aluminium. And in order to absorb a lot of gamma radiation, we need lots of centimeters of lead. We can also use this setup to measure the half-life of a radioactive substance. This is typically done with a protactinium 235 generator, you have a little solvent and then you shake the solvent, but most importantly you place that radioactive substance right in front of the Geiger Miller tube. As always, we're going to first of all measure the background radiation following the procedure outlined in the previous experiment. Then we're going to measure the count rate at some sensible intervals. For instance, every 10 seconds for five minutes. Just like before, we're going to subtract the background for each of those readings, and then we're going to produce a graph of the count rate per second against time. The time at which the count rate has decreased by a half, and this and this corresponding time will give us the half-life. Now, talking about half-life, to ensure that you've covered everything on the specification, you need to have a look at this video in which we look at a very clever graphical way to determine the half-life of a substance